Bum, ba, da, dum. Howdy, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I'm Banjo Ben, your host on the website that teaches you how to play guitar, mandolin, and obviously this week is Banjo Week. We're going to look at one of the main themes that I hear discussed amongst my students on the website, and that's banjo backup. In particular, we're going to look at rolling down the neck backup, how to create those strong foundational rolls um, in these bluegrass songs. Now, we're going to do that very methodically. I'm going to show you four different patterns that take up one measure apiece. We're going to get those down and talk about what exactly they are and then we're going to apply them to this mock progression this eight measure progression that I have so we'll learn how to do that but then we'll learn how to make them talk back in, uh, you know between each other so that you get a very flowing sound then we'll learn how to build licks out of these particular patterns to make it even more interesting okay so if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube I'll invite you here in a minute over to the website banjobenclark.com this is about a 30 minute video lesson I also have tabs for what we're going to look at today as well as three different speeds of mp3 rhythm tracks you can download and practice this progression over and over and over again and really build up your backup skills let's jump right in one of the biggest things that all banjo players want to know how to do fluently is playing rolling back up down the neck. Okay, and so it seems so mysterious to banjo players as they begin to play. You're wondering, how do you get all those notes? How do you, how do you make it sound so smooth? So I want, to, I want to open up that mystery to you. The first way we're going to do that is identify uh, several different ways that we can address each measure at a time. Okay, so let's throw up this first line of tab. I give you four different options here of how to play single measures. And that's initially how we're going to think about it, is a bunch of single measures back to back. As we get more and more advanced, we'll start looking at the song in sections. Um, but here I've got four different ways that we can tackle um, a single 4-4 four, four measure. 4-4 four, four measure just means there's four beats in it, and we would play eight eighth notes if we're going to play all eighth notes. Now the first way to do that is there... Um, Measure one, a simple forward reverse roll, which sounds like this. Now, I encourage you for all these rolls, I have very intense in depth um, roll studies here on the website where I go into much more detail. But a forward reverse roll just simply means we start with our thumb and we go through a forward roll. And then we come back the way we came and then end it with a middle finger. Now we're not isolated to just playing those specific strings. We can move it around as we'll see here in a second. Okay, but the, the general pattern is forward and then back reverse. What makes this roll so great is it's eighth notes. It's eight eighth notes, so it takes up a full measure. Um, so if you had a measure of G, a measure of C, a measure of D, and a measure of G, you can simply make your chords, do that roll, and you can play all the way through it. Now, of course, if that's all you did, it would become monotonous. So we're going to learn how not to only do that roll, which brings us to measure two. We have a very useful roll because it fits very nicely into one measure, and that's a mixed roll, or some people call it a square roll, or maybe an alternating thumb roll. But essentially, we're going to play our thumb, then our index, then our thumb on another string, doesn't really matter which string, and then our middle. You can switch your thumb up. But what makes it great is really um, two different uh, rolls. The first half of that measure two is four notes. Okay, and then we do another one where we can change our thumb up. But it's eight notes as well whenever we put those two rolls together. So in the same way, we, if we had a me four measures, G, C, D, and back to G, we could simply play, play mixed rolls and, and be just fine. Now another way that we can um, have a, a single measure lick, backup lick, is there in measure three. I just call it a partial reverse. You know, whenever we get into these forward and reverse rolls, we get into a lot of syncopation because we're playing three notes over a four note count. So one way to kind of keep that separate in our head is to add some quarter notes into the measure to make it work out. So we're going to start measure three with two quarter notes and then do a reverse roll. That's a way to get a reverse roll sound and fit it in nicely into one four beat measure. Same for measure four, 
we're going to um, do a couple forward rolls, but we're going to start with a quarter note for the first beat, and then do two forward rolls together. And again, those notes for the forward rolls could be on any string. So now we have four options here to fill up a single measure. So now let's look at um, a particular chord progression that I have for us here and start applying some of these and then we'll just keep building. So the particular progression that I have for you, you need to commit to memory. And we simply have two measures of G, two measures of C, a measure of E minor, a measure of D, and then two more measures of G. So it's eight measures total. And what we're really going to think about as we get started here is each individual eight of those eight measures. So I have two measures of G that I need to worry about filling with backup. Okay, now I have four different options, if you'll remember from what we've just learned. And so let's employ a couple of those here. So measure five, we're going to do that forward reverse roll over an open G chord. It's gonna sound like this. Now we've got another measure of G for this particular song. And for whatever specific song you're playing, you'll need to identify what the chords are doing. But for our next measure G, I'm going to employ that mixed roll. Now for measure seven, it starts two measures of C. So how about we just take that same idea that we used for our two measures of G and do the same thing. Let's do a forward reverse roll over a C chord. And then two little mixed rolls or square rolls. So what I want you to kind of commit to memory here at the front is that when you have two measures of the same chord and you want to switch it up a bit, do a forward reverse and then do a measure of mixed rolls. And you can fill it up and it sounds great. So up to speed, five through eight. That sounds great. There's nothing super fancy about that, but it it's suffices exactly what we need. Now we're going to get more advanced than that, but I want you to see that it's not hard to fill up these measures just using these simple rolls. Now as we get into measure nine, we have, if you'll remember, one measure of E minor, one measure of D, and then back to two measures of G.